Welcome to week five of Introduction to Linguistics. This week we're going to focus on syntax, which studies how you can string words together into phrases and sentences. So this is what we've studied so far. We started with phonetics, which studies how you can produce the sounds of languages. Then we studied phonology, which deals with the mental organization of sounds, whether you think that pa and pa are the same or different. We then studied morphology, which is the internal structure of words. Maybe you have roots and then an affix comes in and tacks on a little additional bit of meaning. This week we'll focus on syntax, which studies how you can have words and string them together into phrases and sentences. So for example, in English, you can have a phrase like the nice cat, but you cannot have cat nice the. This would, be a, this would not be a well-formed phrase of English. Before we begin with syntax, let's take a look at different kinds of words. So on the left column, we have words like cookie, pet, and chocolate. And on the right, we have words like eat, walk, and sleep. They might have taught you um, what to call the words on the left and what to call the words on the right. So what kind of words are they? Please pause the video. The ones on the left are usually called nouns. They're words for things. They could be tangible things like a cookie or a chocolate that you can hold in your hand, or they might be intangible things like love, freedom, or respect. On the right, we have words for actions like eat, walk, sleep, and so forth. We call these verbs. Nouns and verbs are types of syntactic categories. A syntactic category is a label that you give to a word according to its morphological properties, but also to its syntactic properties, like what kind of uh, function it's serving inside of a sentence. So we have nouns and verbs. What other syntactic categories can you remember? Please pause the video. So you might have studied um, syntactic categories like nouns, verbs, but also prepositions, adjectives, adverbs, articles, and so forth. Um, some syntactic categories are lexical. We also call them content words. Um, this means that they are full of meaning. For example, a noun like dog and cat is full of meaning because it refers to a particular creature. We have adjectives like big, fluffy, small, verbs like eat, walk, drink, and adverbs like um, yesterday or now. All these words have a lot of meaning packed into them. Some syntactic categories, on the other hand, are functional. We also call them grammar words. We have uh, categories like determiners, which you might also know as articles, like the or a, which don't have a lot of meaning, but they help you structure a sentence of English. We have auxiliaries like do, as in do not eat that pizza. We have coordinators, which can help you match two nouns, like pizza and breadsticks. We can have conjunctions that help you match two sentences, like I eat pizza because it is delicious. You can have complementizers where you match a noun and a sentence, the pizza that everyone loves. And you can have prepositions which give you spatial and temporal information, like in, on, at, with, something, or before 3 p.m. You might have noticed that the word before occurs more than one once in our list, and this is because words can have different syntactic categories depending on what they're doing in a specific sentence. Sometimes morphology can help you identify uh, the, cat the syntactic category of a word. For example, in Spanish, infinitive verbs always end in these suffixes, ar, er, ir, as in mirar, comer, dormir, to see, to eat, and to sleep. If you have that suffix, you're almost certainly looking at a verb. On the other hand, English doesn't have those suffixes, so you need to look at the context of a word to figure out what it's doing. For example, here we have the word Facebook. In the first sentence, it's a noun. Facebook is an app. In the second one, it's a verb. Let me Facebook that real quick. It's an action. Sometimes morphology helps. You, in English, you can have, I'm Facebooking something, and you have the suffix ing, the progressive aspect, and it's tacking onto Facebook. ing only goes onto verbs, so you know that this word is functioning as a verb in that sentence. But if you don't have any morphology to help you, you might need to look at the word and the other words around it. 
at its distribution. So for example, nouns, you can know something is a noun if you can exchange it for a pronoun. In the sentence, Facebook is an app, you can exchange Facebook for it. It is an app, and the sentence would still work. So we know Facebook is, for, is functioning as a noun in that sentence. On the other hand, if you have, let me Facebook that real quick, you can know it's a verb because you can replace it with the auxiliary do. Let me do that real quick. The sentence still works, so we know that in the second example, Facebook was functioning as a verb. The diagnostic also correctly predicts that in the first sentence, Facebook is an app, Facebook was not a verb because you cannot change it for the auxiliary do. Do is an app is not a real sentence of English. It also correctly predicts that in the second sentence, let me Facebook that real quick, Facebook cannot be a noun because you cannot replace it with it. You cannot say, say let me it that, and the sentence does not work because it does not mean the same thing. So you have to look at a word and its context in order to figure out what its syntactic category is. This is the way practically all syntactic categories of English are defined. For example, adjectives are words that can be um, between determiners and nouns, like in the big cat, the fluffy cat, the scary cat. Auxiliaries are words that can go between a subject and a verb, uh, like he is going, he was going, he will be going. Determiners are words that can come before a noun, like I bought the cat, a cat. So notice that, look at the, the definition. It's defined in terms of what you can find around it. By the way, not all languages have the same syntactic categories. For example, Japanese probably does not have adjectives. It, it probably has a different kind of verb. On the left, we have what is usually called an adjective in Japanese. Beautiful is utsukushi. And on the right, we have a verb, to walk, aruku. However, the adjective beautiful has a present tense conjugation. Utsukushi is beautiful. Aruku is walking. Utsukushikatta was beautiful. Arukatta was walking. Utsukushikunai is not beautiful. Arukanai is not walking. Utsukushikunakatta it was not beautiful. Arukunakatta it was not walking. He was not walking. Um, as you can see, the adjective is behaving exactly like the verb. In English, adjectives don't do that. You can't have an adjective like uh, bigging or smalling that takes the same ing suffix as a verb. So Japanese probably does not have adjectives. It has two different types of verbs, and the translation of the verb like utsukushi would be an adjective in English, beautiful. So Japanese probably doesn't have adjectives. There's other languages that have syntactic categories that don't occur in English. In Cook Islands Maori, we have a kind of word that is a tense aspect mood marker. It encloses the information on tense aspect mood. Like in the sentence, kwa aire te reki rotonga. The first word kwa tells you that something happened in the past and that it is in the perfect or complete aspect. Tere went to Rarotonga. In ka aere te reki rarotonga, Tere will go to Rarotonga. The ka tells you that something is in the future. And then, te aere nei te reki rarotonga. Te and ne is a circumfix that tells you that an action is in progress in the present. Tere is going to Rarotonga. English doesn't have these kinds of markers, but you need them in Cook Islands Maori. So in summary, syntactic categories include categories like nouns, verbs, adjectives, and so forth. And they help us describe the behavior of a word in a sentence, what it can be accompanied by and what positions it can occupy. In English, the only way that we can know uh, the syntactic category for sure is by looking at the word and its context. And sometimes we need to perform tests like replace the word with do or a, pron a pronoun like it to be sure that it's a noun or a verb. And finally, not all languages have the same syntactic categories. For example, Japanese might not have adjectives, and Cook Islands Maori has one that's called tense aspect markers, which English does not have. In the next video, we will start with syntax.